this week I have uh, an amazing artist that I discovered on Facebook. So it was really lovely to be able to reach out to this person and show love for their music and ask them to come on the show. It's brilliant. Um, I've never met this person before, but we've had a little chat and I can't wait to, to ask him questions about his music. Um, so I'd like you to pop your hands together at home for Elliot Porter. Hi Elliot, how's it going? Hi, yeah, it's all good, thank you. It's all good. Fabulous. And um, thank you for coming on the show to have a chat with me today. Yeah, no props, no props. It's, it's a really cool show, so it's uh, nice to come on. Thank you. And um, obviously, I, I discovered you on Facebook. Do you get a lot of people that just, like, discover your music from just places like that? Yeah, yeah, fortunately. Um, Facebook's always been quite a good one for me. Um, uh, Instagram, actually, is becoming a little bit more um useful as i use it a little bit more so yeah I t it tends to be kind of facebook or youtube mainly i i use twitter a bit but not not a lot for music to be honest yeah i i can't get on with twitter <laughs> <laughs> i guess because i'm a visual person and twitter you just there's no visuals really it's just words but yeah fair enough yeah and um so we're here to talk about your music i know you do a few other things as well you've got your own podcast and all which is great so people can go check that out too um which is fab but uh yeah we're here to talk about your music today which is great and you've recently put out a song called brighton song i have yeah so that came out in uh, at the end of february yeah brilliant and um i mean i've watched that's that's the reason i got in contact with you i was like this is amazing um and what what inspired you to write that song obviously brighton but <laughs> yeah so yeah brighton was one of the main inspirations behind it um but it was kind of half written um up when i lived near cambridge and half in brighton so um the inspiration behind the song really is it's kind of about a lifelong love that you could never imagine leaving um and it kind of talks about all the kind of things that lovers do especially in brighton on the pier um kind of walking down the beach and that was the idea of it and it's kind of the the idea of not imagining how you could ever let something like that go but obviously people do let relationships go and, and things yeah. do go you know um but it i also see it as a kind of uh, a love story for a place because i love brighton um and it was really nice to be able to film the video there um and the and the music kind of flows i think like the sea um the chords are really simple it's like a a over d kind of thing but it's got like this kind of flow kind of to it a little bit like the waves on the beach and um we tried to create that with with the uh with the the ambience of the music as well brilliant and the music video is great and that little animation i mean for everyone who's not seen it yet please go and check it out on youtube but that little animation just breaks your heart these expressions i mean did, was that your idea or was it was it dan summers who did the video it it's uh yeah it's mega it's mega emotional isn't it um so yeah there's a guy called ben summers who does who's produced the video um smoke no pony is his company and we had dan lumley came with us to help so um yes yeah, so we've got a dan and a ben but yeah. ben it was ben's idea really so i i had all these kind of ideas of an animated video i've wanted to do an animated video for so long um i just didn't really know the first place to start with it i'm not a video maker um i tend to use kind of uh actors in most of my videos or or i'm in it and i was just like i was just like i want to do something different and how do we do that and i had all these crazy ideas of like floating a piano on the sea um yeah. with an animated character as well but ben kind of informed me that that would be really tough to do even or even green screen it would be pretty hard and yeah. we we couldn't get a hold of a piano because we wanted to put a piano on the beach as well yeah. um and then he came up with this amazing concept. Um, he's a he's a guy I've known for a while. He's a good friend, um, and he happens to be a great video producer. Um, and he came up with this concept, and and he and when he sent it to me, I was like, wow, that's exactly it. That is exactly what what we want to do. And and I was like, can you do that? You know, is that going to be hard? Is it going to take a while? It did take a while, to be honest, with those characters, but um, they were amazing when I first saw them. So if anyone hasn't seen it, they look a little bit like um they're plasticine kind of characters and one's a female one's a male um and they are just kind of two little creatures really that that are walking around brighton and i'm kind of there um and they're kind of following me around but yeah it it's lovely i i really like love it 
Amazing. And for, how was your reaction when you first saw it completed? I was I was really actually kind of taken aback, yeah, because when you're in music videos, you, you kind of do it and then you kind of forget about it, like, after a while. And it was two or three months it took Ben to put all the animation together because he's a busy guy as well. Um, so I knew it was going to be a long time. And then when we, when I came back to see it, I was like, I was, I was blown away really. And there wasn't many changes that we had to make. There was a couple. Um, but yeah, I knew it was going to be great, but I didn't realize it was going to be so beautiful. And, um, the way he's put it together, I was so pleased with. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It's really nice to have friends that you've known for a long time who are really talented in that way and you can work together and create something lovely. Yeah. I, I find, I do like to work with people that really know the music or, understand where the music's coming from and you can you can get lucky and find someone that you've just met who can do that um and and i've done that before as well but yeah i've i've got a few guys in my kind of team i suppose that help me out with things and and they all understand the reasons behind the music and they they've watched my kind of uh development i suppose over the over years and yeah i think i feel like they really really get what I'm trying to do and so it's not hard to kind of put a concept to them whereas you might put a concept to someone you don't know very well and it, it might not be as easy yeah definitely I, I can I hear that <laughs> and um we're gonna have a listen to Brighton's song in a bit so you're kindly letting me share that um which you've performed live cool. um which is great you're going to perform live um but just to kind of going back in time here now so ha have you been a songwriter all your life or what's your journey there yeah it's, it's it's funny actually like um i grew up kind of in a very musical family and, and everyone kind of played in bands um my, my granddad uh, my, my other granddad played a church organ and a piano um so i grew up uh, around a lot of music at christmas time and family gatherings there was always music going on um and i believe my one of my granddads did did do a ting do a little bit of songwriting actually both of them probably did actually some songwriting um and i i always had it in my mind that i wanted to be a songwriter but when i first started out I, you know i had very little confidence um i didn't know the mechanics of songwriting i kind of just learned from listening to great songwriters like uh, the beatles and david bowie um James Taylor, Neil Young, people like that. Um, and I kind of just listened and listened to loads and loads and loads of music and kind of learned how to do it. And and I was quite frustrated. I had loads of tapes. I think I was always going to be a songwriter because I really knew deep down inside that I wanted to do it. Yeah. And I wanted to tell my story. I, I never felt like I could kind of express myself in things like school or, you know, uh, maybe social kind of environments that easily. But I found music, I was able to do that. A lot easier but it took me a while to kind of get the confidence to put music out because of you know as you probably know when when you first start the songs are te the songs tend to be pretty rubbish um and you're kind of like you go through a period i feel where you're like oh I'm, i can never do i'm never going to do this but i always had this kind of belief that one day i'd write i'd write a song which was going to work and then I didn't know if that would just be the only song I'd ever write, but it turned out that once I'd written one song that I thought worked, I was able to kind of then go on and write more songs and more songs and more songs. So, yeah, I think deep down I've always been a songwriter, but it took me a while. I've got to be honest, it took me a while to kind of get into it properly. Yeah, amazing. And I was so glad that you decided <laughs> to do that because you're amazing. So Thank you. That's great. And the the, um, the Bright song, that's from your album called, is it Lanes? That's it. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. And is that named after Brighton as well, the Lanes? Yeah, it is really. Um, I, I, I spent a lot of time in Brighton and did a lot of gigs and spent a lot of time walking around the lanes and, and I think it's beautiful. Um, and I believe you're from Brighton, aren't you? I think. I um, or you live, you live in Brighton. Yeah. And when when i was going through the album tracks brighton song seemed to be the standout song like the producer who produced it dave gerard he um he kind of really liked that one um we were very lucky to get alex from elbow played drums on the album alex reeves and 
he that was his favorite song so I, I kind of had to take take it from people that i really respected in the industry that that it was probably the strongest song um and oh, i love all the songs in the album but that one just seemed like the, the one so then i had a song called lanes as well um which had come as well kind of from the from the brighton song kind of thing um and yeah it just made sense really so we called it lanes and and it's got that kind of nice imagery of the lanes in brighton but then you can also relate it to country lanes or whatever or, um and and uh, whatever you want really yeah yeah definitely i just saw that and i was like oh brian <laughs> yeah yeah brian knows the lane so <laughs> oh absolutely and what um so you're not based in brighton no so where are you based yeah so i'm based um i'm based like halfway between london and cambridge um so i used to i used to be up in cambridge for a while um I play I played a lot of gigs around there, played a lot in London, but I always go to Brighton probably about three or four times a year, either busking, I've done a bit of busking in Brighton, or playing gigs. And when I've done tours, I always kind of make sure that we do one in Brighton because I've got a lot of friends down there that I go and see and um people that I know and I, I know we've got a good like we can get people to gigs down there. So um yeah i've i've always had a really strong connection to brighton and i believe that probably one day i will actually end up moving there to be honest um it's kind of in the plan good okay awesome and do you feel like it's um is it quite an important thing to be in a certain place as a songwriter or a musician do you think as in geographically or yeah, um so yeah brighton would it be easier or you know yeah I, th I feel like you just have to really um, find somewhere that you, you're comfortable writing. And it can be either some people find that living in cities like London um, is quite good for their writing. Personally, I don't find that. Um, I've spent a lot of time in London and um, I, find, I find that I need a little bit of um, quiet to, to really be, be, get my writing up to where it needs to be. Where I live is quite a quiet place, but then I, I can go into London and I feel like with Brighton, though, you've got you've got the best of both because you've got that kind of, you know, you've got some countryside, which is very close. You've got the beach, you've got the sea and you've got the city. So um, I think somewhere like that would be perfect because you've got all kinds of um, different environments to write in. Um, so, yeah, for me, somewhere like that, it would would be my ideal. Yeah, it's brilliant in Brighton. Um, I'm a baby songwriter, but I when I moved to Brighton, I was like, okay, I'm in a place where I can actually do this and I'll be surrounded by other people who are like mine. Mm. And stuff. So it was great. So I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when you move down. I um, will, I will. <laughs> cool. So, um, yeah, you've prepared a couple of songs for us and one is that you're going to be releasing um, at the end of June. Is that correct? Yeah, it's it's hopefully it's penciled in for the end of June. So yeah, it's worked out quite nicely. It's going to be reasonably soon that one will be coming out. Fabulous. Well, if it's all right with you, we'll take a listen to both of them and then have a chat about them afterwards. Is that right? Yeah, sure. Amazing. Well, let's listen to Elliot Porter. We've got Brighton Song and the other one is called... Normal People. Normal People. Thank you. <laughs> let's check this out. <laughs> Hold on for life 
it's coming home again. To face the known, and to have. Sit right here again, right next to me. Remember how it used to be on that red city, the one your mother bought. I know those Sundays drinking tea. Sit right here again. Sometimes you just need a friend Not a lover who's on call Ain't it true when you see it changing It's always in reverse Ain't it true when you see it changing Sure, for better or for worse. So sit right here again on your favorite chair, the one with the ribbons on the back. And I know there's promises that we're bound to break. Tonight it's only you and me. It's hard to see it changing When time is standing still You're still everything and nothing You keep on pulling me up that hill So sit right here again my lover, my only friend Come right here again You know I need a friend I'm not leaving you this time I'm not leaving you this time Oh, I'm not leaving 
I was like, I mean, I've, I've heard the Brighton song before anyway. But yeah. Really emotional performance. I think it's your voice, you know, your like tone of voice it really elicits like an emotional response in me. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. It's really good. For, for oh, that's really, that's really nice. Yeah, thank you. No, you're welcome. And that exclusive listen to normal people, everyone. Beautiful song. You're a really storyteller. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think I think that's what that's all my favourite kind of songwriters are. I like that. So like, yeah, I, I suppose um, Neil Young, but but uh, Bob Dylan and stuff. But my kind of modern kind of influences, I suppose, people like Damien Rice, Glenn Hansard. There's quite a, there's quite an Irish connection. Um, people like David Gray, Stephen Fretwell, and people like that, and. Yeah, they all they all do that, and that's kind of what I what I kind of listened to a lot when I was starting out on songwriting. So yeah, I like to I like to dip into those influences. Yeah, amazing. And do you want to t tell us a bit more about normal people? Yeah, so it's an interesting one actually because um, it was written during lockdown, uh, the first lockdown, so like March to June twenty twenty, whenever when everything kind of like stopped basically the world stops and i feel it was a strange time for musicians and, and songwriters because i feel some people kind of loved it and and to be honest i didn't mind it i didn't mind the the break initially from like traveling around and doing music all the time um but i feel i feel like some songwriters were kind of loved that kind of time i i found it quite difficult to write music because i i kind of rely on being out on the in the world and, and meeting people and seeing situations and speaking to people about their their lives and we were very limited in the amount that we could do that obviously we couldn't see anyone that wasn't our you know immediate bubble or we could only see our friends on zoom and it's not the best place to kind of have a chat and um you know really really get to know people um so I found it really hard at first. To, I didn't really have any inspiration for to writing songs. Um, I was kind of stuck. I was self-isolating on my own, really, uh, for the first couple of months. Um, and I was doing online gigs to kind of keep myself busy. And I did a, some podcasts and stuff. And, I, and luckily, I, I, I did some some like appearances and stuff um, for, for gigs for people. But the songwriting side of it, I, it didn't really kick off. So I started watching this tv show which is set in ireland actually called normal people and it was on bbc and i'd read the book a couple of years ago but i didn't put the two together i i, I didn't really realize it was the same thing and then i i was watching it and fi uh, really feeling it you know like you're saying about the emotional kind of connection i was really feeling like a connection to this tv show and i loved it it was beautifully shot the storyline is is beautiful 
Um, and I'd recommend anyone to see it if they if they can. Um, and weirdly, that inspired a song. And um, it was one of those things which just came out of nowhere. And, and I wrote it very quickly and then honed the lyrics a bit later on. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, well, that is so obviously been inspired by that TV show, in my mind anyway, um, that I had to call it Normal People. And, and I actually really like the title as well. So, yeah. That's so interesting. Didn't expect that, but that's great. I'm going to watch that TV show now. <laughs> I think I think you'll love it. It's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. It's amazing how we all can draw inspiration from so many different things. Mm. Even like, it, it, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you do you draw inspiration from from people or or kind of um you know being out in the world yeah exactly mm. I, I literally as soon as lockdown happened i was like not even i couldn't even write anything yeah and still i actually have struggled for the whole year trying to actually write um and actually play i just have yeah it was really difficult to get and do something musically so i feel you yeah yeah it it was and yeah i feel like you're right as well it's kind of just slowly coming back mm. but it might take a while before it you know fully does yeah well fingers crossed soon um <laughs> maybe we can get back to or oh, the the new norm as everyone's saying yeah i truly hope so <laughs> yeah um so let's just chat quickly about how people can listen to your music how they can find you where where's best to follow you that sort of thing yeah, so I'm I'm kind of on all the places. Um, my my website elliotporter.co.uk is kind of the central hub where you can find all the links to my latest single and my videos and stuff like that. And you can find some covers that I've done on YouTube. But yeah, it's it's generally elliotporter.co.uk. Uh, Facebook and YouTube is Elliot Porter Music, so really easy. And then Instagram is Porter L, so it's kind of my name backwards. Um, and uh the same with twitter so they're the kind of four i'd say instagram and facebook if you want to message me that's where you'll probably probably uh find me as well so and you can listen on spotify and and all the all the places where you would stream brilliant and for those who aren't watching and can't see your name behind you um it is elliot with two l's and one t <laughs> that's it yeah a lot of people get that confused because yeah. there's two ways to spell it but yeah two l's and one t yeah Brilliant. Um, so I will put the, the links and everything as um, normal below on the YouTube uh, video um, so you can find them easily there. But for anyone listening on any other means, then yep, go and type in Elliot Porter. You'll find him and say hello. He's lovely, as you can hear and see. Yeah, send me, send me a message. I, li I like to receive messages and chat about music, basically. <laughs> there you go. Brilliant. Um, so thank you so much for coming on the show. Just got one more question for you. Half an hour goes like so it really um, does. last question is if you could give the people out there listening and watching just one piece of advice what would it be yeah so um if you if you're gonna get into music or um if you if you maybe want to write songs uh, or be a singer who who sings songs and it for my, my one thing i would say is stay authentic to yourself so there'll be a lot of uh, there'll be a lot of voices uh, from outside, from friends, from family, from people in the industry, from people that try and, you know, help you out. They may not always be the most helpful. Um, but as long as I think you stay true to why you do it, that's what that's what people care about. Um, like you say, with the storytelling, stay true to your story. Um, don't don't you know, don't try and kind of um imitate anyone else you know try and try and stick to what you do um and all the good things will then come out um if if you ask me so um yeah stay authentic to to why you do it and 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 do what you do and don't worry too much about what other people do brilliant i agree <laughs> <laughs> that wisdom elliot um no worries it's been a pleasure having a chat with you and I, I do hope we get to chat and see each other in person soon next time you're in brighton let me know um, yeah that'd be great yeah. yeah let's do a gig or something yeah why not yes <laughs> that. <laughs> brilliant um well i'll let you go elliot thank you so much again everyone go and show elliot some love go follow him um and we'll catch you later well done him see you later thanks oh,
amazing is he? Oh, I love him. Um, first time meeting him as well. I, I love it. I love him so much. Um, right, new best friend. <laughs> He doesn't know it yet it's fine um so i have um yeah put all the links down below for you go and follow elliot please go and stream his music go watch his video please go and watch that video it's incredible um and leave some comments it's always nice to see comments and things like that not a lot of people do comment on youtube but please do because it's nice to see them and Elliot will definitely reply. That's how I got in touch with him, so there we go. Um, and just to leave you again with another quote, as usual this week, actually <laughs> goes really well again with what Elliot was saying as his last uh, words there. Um, the quote is, be who you want to be, not who they want you to be. And that is something that I have always struggled with. Um, not so much now, because I've learned actually to be myself and to be comfortable with who I am. But for my whole life, just going through and trying to be what everyone else wanted me to be. Um, and it's so liberating then to just be yourself and you feel more comfortable. And then you, if you're doing things like songwriting, then it comes across um, better as well and, and more um, authentic which is the word that Elliot used. So definitely, if you're in that space of, oh, I'm always people pleasing, try your best to try and forget what everyone else is trying to tell you to do and just really look inside and think and feel what you want to do and do that because you're amazing and you, the world needs to see your amazingness so go for it um, but yes so thank you again for being here thanks for checking out Elliot I know you will um, and I will see you next week lots of love bye bye <laughs>